Uh, good morning, everyone, or afternoon, whichever time you're watching this. Uh, so today's lesson is sponsored by the number three, which is the amount of students I have, and by the letter Q for quarantine. <laughs> so this is going to be great. Today we're going to be talking about uh, musical structure, how to analyze musical phrase structures. So before we begin with that, there are a few key terms that we need to learn before diving into this. Our first key term is a motive. Does anyone know what a motive is? It's like a like a theme, kind of. A theme. I right? guess that like it like it can come back. Yeah, yeah, it can come back. Any, anyone short. else have any idea? It's short, short. usually. Mm -hmm. So a motive, um, with in the dictionary is defined as the smallest recognizable musical element or musical idea. These things can be anything from pitches to rhythm to the contour of pieces. These motivic ideas can be short and sweet, or they can be long and more elaborate, more complex. A few motivic ideas, a uh, few examples. I'm gonna play a few examples. So one very short musical example, it's a motive. share a common something within their own uh, ideas. And the next musical term is a sentence. Anyone know what a sentence is? Uh, I know. Is it inside of a period? It can be inside of a period, yes. It, yeah, uh, I don't know, so it's been a long time. <laughs> it's been a while, right? <laughs> um, Sections like antecedent and consequent. Is that, that's a period. That's a period. That's a period. Yeah. consequent is a period. So a sentence is whenever you have a basic idea with another basic idea, and then it's elaborated and finished with the uh, same basic ideas or something like that, leading to a cadence. So one way that people remember this is a mathematical term, x plus x equals 2x. One sentence that uh, people are most familiar with is this one. Basic idea. And then it comes back with like... And then bum 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 uh, Motivic ideas and sentences can be the foundation for a whole symphony such as that. It's Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. The whole symphony is based off of that one motivic idea. It just keeps coming back and forth in various different ways. Um, the last term is period. Now, what's a period? We already said. Antecedent, consequent. Antecedent, consequent, and what else? Uh, is it? Oh, uh, no, no. I mean, A plus B, right? Or A and C. If you want to put like some stuff into it. Is that yeah. the thing you do? Well, that is the thing where you do. <laughs> yes. You make the. Uh, we you see we had like little little bumps, little, little bumps <laughs> like that. Um, so this is how you would write a period. Let's kind of go through these. Is it yes? Oh, it has a cadence. It has a cadence. cadence. Yes. Yeah. So the biggest part about a period, period is a cadence. Now the cadence is how many cadences? One, two, three, four, two. two. Exactly. Two cadences. And this is very important about a period. Where do they have to be? How, how are they defining the two cadences? There's one in between the mm -hmm. antecedent and the consequent and one at the end of the consequent. There's one right here, and then there's one at the end. And right? it's imperfect authentic. Perfect authentic could be one of them. So how many cadences are there? Oh, like different types? There are different types of cadences. About how many are there? Uh, uh, there, there, are, there are three basic cadences yeah. that are used in most, most, of, uh, most music. Can we name them? Half cadence. Half cadence. Perfect. Perfect. Identic. And, and, and imperfect. 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 Okay. Yes. So we have a half cadence, mm -hmm. a imperfect, authentic cadence, 
and then a perfect authentic cadence. Now, the placement of these in the period is very crucial. Um, in order for a period to make sense, you have to have a weak cadence go to a stronger cadence. What's the weakest cadence out of these three? Half. Half cadence, yes. What's the strongest cadence out of these? Per perfect. The perfect authentic? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Perfect authentic cadence. Now, can, so a period could potentially have a half cadence and a perfect authentic. Right? Yeah. That's mm -hmm. good. Could we have an imperfect authentic cadence going to a perfect authentic cadence? Um, I mean, it would still go to one, so it probably wouldn't work like that, right? We could potentially still have this. Okay. Because the hierarchy, the half cadence being the weakest and the, the perfect authentic being the strongest, you still have this weak to strong cadence. You have a more, um, more satisfactory ending with the perfect authentic than you did with the imperfect authentic. Could we potentially have imperfect going to half cadence? Mm, I mean, that ends on five. Nobody wants to end on five. Not but, actually, no. For a okay. period structure, no. Because a half cadence is weaker than an imperfect authentic, it wouldn't make sense. It's kind of like oh. it's like building a pyramid upside down. Mm -hmm. But you could have it. But you could have it the other way, like a half cadence to an imperfect authentic. A half cadence going to an imperfect authentic. That could actually be one. And even sometimes what most, what some composers can do, they'll have a half cadence going to imperfect authentic, then on another structure they'll have another half cadence going to a perfect authentic, mm -hmm. and then you can look at those two and be like one big period because it ends on an imperfect right. going to a perfect. Mm -hmm. So make sure the biggest concept of this is a weak cadence going to a stronger cadence. And you have the antecedent, the first is the first, what we call the first bit of the period, and the consequent. The second part of the other period is knowing if it's parallel or contrasting. Do we know what what is a parallel parallel a parallel period? Like the two sections. I don't want to say they're exact, but that they're like similar. Like they're not like yes. Like a it's like a prime. Absolutely yes, a a prime. Um, it can be similar in um, a couple of different ways. Possibly melodically, you hear the exact same thing, almost restated uh, exactly. It could be slightly different, maybe uh, one or two, uh, trans transpose one or two steps in either way. You could also have a rhythmic idea that comes back, and not so much a melodic idea. You could have a harmonic idea that constantly keeps coming back. Any of these things could help get a parallel period. The contrasting is literally you have two sections, weak and strong, cadences and they sound similar but not nearly as similar as a parallel period. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to look at example one. Example one is going to be either a sentence or a period. I'm going to give you guys about a minute to sit here and try and hum it to yourselves and we're going to talk through it after, after you figure out what the piece is. You should be able to figure this out. I'll give you guys a minute or two. So we can kind of talk about it. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a starting pitch. First off, what is the musical example? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. In reference to Morgan Watts' birthday today. <laughs> um, so here's the starting pitch. Why don't we go ahead and try and sing this. You can add words if you want, or you can simply just hum it. Uh, ready, and. Great. 
So, is this a sentence or a period? It's a period. Period. Okay, we got one more period. Do we have? Um. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Period. Period. Morgan, what do you think? Um. Um. Actually, I think it's a sentence. Think it's a sentence. I vote for, I vote for a sentence. Yeah. Me too. I vote for sentence. 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 All, All right. right. So it is a sentence. Uh -huh. Yes. It's a sentence. <laughs> so one thing with sentences that I kind of forgot to mention is the way you another really. Uh, so I'm going to explain this this formula a little bit. The x represents the number of measures and the motivic idea. So you can have one measure plus another one measure to equal two measures. Right? Uh, what happens often in music is you'll have two measures plus two measures equals four measures. So you have to have this basic idea plus the basic idea, an elongation of that idea leading to a, a cadence. So where's our first basic idea? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, it's to pick up into the So pick up into note. the half note. Mm -hmm. So right here mm -hmm. is our first basic idea. We're going to call this X. Where's our second basic idea? Uh, the next, to the next half note. To the yeah. next half note. Pick up to the next half note. There we go. Right there. We're going to call that another X. So mm -hmm. plus. And where is our continuation to the cadence? The next, well. Mm -hmm. Is it to the end or is it to the... So it would be to the end. Okay. Uh, the instance is pretty simple. It's uh, here and then finishing okay. up here. Yeah. So this one's a little tricky because of the pickup. Some people have a little bit of trouble. Like, well, do, do I count the pickup as measure one? Or because you hear, you see two two measures right here, but minus the pickup. Add the pickup over here. You can kind of do a little bit of math, figure it out. Mm -hmm. But you have two measures plus two measures equals four measures. And that's how you uh, can see a sentence. You have the basic idea plus another basic idea slightly changed. The only difference is the it going to an A instead of a G and coming down half step, half step. You see the same contour of the idea. And then finally the elongation all the way up leading to a solid cadence. Now we did say some periods because we thought that these were maybe cadences, part of the half notes and everything. Mm -hmm. Those if okay, if you would so happy birthday to you. Not exactly finished yet. Okay. Happy birthday to you. You still want more, you know? Uh, it could be considered a half cadence or so. If you if you had that idea, however though it ends on a G, we're in the key of G. That wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Plus you have this um, Ray Do which could potentially be a perfect authentic if you had, you know, if you had the chords and everything to really get it. So if you had a perfect authentic, that would be very difficult to say if you have a period because perfect authentic can't be the first part, uh, the first cadence of the dance scene. So that's, that's how you find kind of a sentence. Next we're going to do example two. Again, give you guys about a minute or two to hum it out, try to figure out what piece it is and figure out if it's either a sentence or a period. Give you guys one or two minutes. Okay, so do we have what, what's the piece? Oh, to joy. Oh, to joy, yes. And do we want to say this is a sentence or a period? Um, a uh, period. Maybe go with a period. Period. Yeah. 
Period. I didn't see anything. Yeah. Period. Okay. So yeah, yes, it is in fact a period. Now, now that we established, we think that it's a period. That's kind of our hypothesis. Now we have to sit along and figure it out. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so real quick, I'm going to for those of you who may not know Ode to Joy, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to play it. And if we want to hum and sing along, we absolutely encourage. Mm -hmm. All right. Two. Ready. And. That's a good indicator that hey, this might be a period. So let's break this down. What is, where's our first, where's the antecedent? Let me ask that. It's the first four measures. First four measures, so we have right here antecedent, all right, and what's the consequent? This is the last four. It would be the last four. With a period, another thing that I forgot to mention is both antecedent and consequent have to be equal in the amount of measures they have. So if we have four measures here, we have to have four measures down there, so on and so forth. This could be eight and eight, 16 and 16, it could be however, two and two, um, they just need to be equal. Next, for it to be a period, what is the defining factor of a period? What is it? The cadence. The cadences. Specifically, what kind of cadence and another kind of cadence? A, a weak to a strong. A weak cadence to a strong cadence. So where's our cadence in the first? in the first section. Where is it or what is Where it? Where is it? At the very, I mean the half note. The half note is uh, where? The last one. The last one, yes. Could we kind of figure out what kind of case that is? Um, I'm gonna guess, well, I mean, I guess I could figure it out. It's probably, I wanna say a half cadence. But that's with me not doing any factoring. Sure, sure. Okay, so, so if it were a half cadence, let's, let's kind of put a little bit of theory to it. Yes, ma'am. I was going to say, I think it's an imperfect authentic. Think it's an imperfect authentic? Because, I mean, there's not like the full chord structure, so it's hard yeah. to determine, but it's an E, and I feel like that would either be a part of a G okay. major or. So, so we got, we got to either half cadence or imperfect. Both of them are weak. Which is good. This is good. So let's let's figure. Let's do a little bit of theory. What key is this in? D major. D major. Okay. So it's in the key of D. Let's put it. Uh, put it down. Uh, you can see that. Yeah. For a perfect authentic, what chord is a perfect authentic in D major? D major. D major chord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, spelled how? Uh, D major triad. Spelled D major triad. D F sharp A. D F sharp. And A. Good. What is a half cadence in the key of D major? A major. A major. Can you spell it? A, C sharp, E. A, C sharp, and E. Good. So, we say we, want it to, we don't know if it's either a perfect authentic or imperfect authentic or a half cadence. I'm going to put this right here. Equals B, A, C, and I, A, C. And this equals a half cadence. Wait, why does that equal the imperfect too? Because a perfect and an imperfect authentic cadence both end on top, both end on one. Uh, the difference oh, is going. the difference is depending on how they're they're comp. So okay. a perfect authentic a perfect authentic cadence ends with T do or re do. Mm -hmm. An imperfect authentic could end it could potentially end on do, but more than likely it might end on like three. Oh, okay. Might end uh, fa mi mm -hmm. or re mi or a jump maybe mm -hmm. sol do okay. or something like that. Uh, anything that isn't t do or re do is imperfect mm -hmm. Um That's just with our ears. Our ears want to hear a uh, if you have right here. You hear this. You have um, uh, you 
do an ending on that tonic. But it's not nearly as strong as ending from T to Ray to Do. Uh, so, this, that's possible, authentic, that's an authentic cadence if it's perfect or imperfect. Then a half cadence, either A, C, or E. Which note is that? E. That's an E. Mm -hmm. E fits into what chord? Five. Five chord, this A major chord, this half cadence. So, we put a little half cadence, if you can see that. Good. And then this ends on, yeah. what, on yeah. Do. Is it ends T Do, Re Do? Re Do. Re Do, which would mean it could potentially fit into a perfect authentic, mm -hmm. right? So next we would have a perfect authentic, perfect authentic cadence. Does this fit a period structure? Mm -hmm. yeah. Why? Because there are two phrases, so you have the antecedent and consequent. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one ends on a half cadence, and the last one ends on a perfect authentic. Exactly. You know. two, two phrases. One of them ends on a weaker cadence, one of them ends on a stronger 